Lifters often go through cycles of bulking and cutting to maximize muscle growth and get as lean as possible. It is commonly assumed that training should differ depending on whether you're in a calorie surplus versus a deficit. Should training differ between these nutrition phases? And if so, how should training be manipulated? In this video, we will try to answer these questions. First, we need to cover the concept of energy balance. Most of us watching this video are already aware of this, but for those who may be newer to the nutrition world, may need a quick reminder to understand the rest of this video. If you want to skip ahead past this section, you can go straight to the next section using the timestamps in the video description. Essentially, our energy balance determines our weight change over time. In the most simplistic sense, energy balance comes down to a simple equation. Energy intake versus energy expenditure. Energy intake is simply the total amount of calories we consume through food and drink throughout the day. Energy expenditure, on the other hand, refers to how many calories are burned throughout the day. Energy is expended through various different components, such as metabolic rate, the thermic effect of food, physical activity, and any other subconscious movements performed throughout the day. Essentially, there are three general states of energy balance we can be in at any given point in time, which we will now cover. The first is an energy surplus. This is when we consume more calories per day than we expend. An energy surplus will result in weight gain over time, and the magnitude of the surplus will determine the rate of weight gain. In other words, if we eat in a larger surplus, we will gain weight at a faster rate, and if we eat in a more conservative surplus, our rate of weight gain will be slower. The second state of energy balance is energy maintenance. This is when our calorie intake is equal to our energy expenditure. This will result in an approximate maintenance of body weight over time. And the last form of energy balance is an energy deficit. This is when our calorie intake is less than our expenditure. This will result in body weight loss over time, and the magnitude of the deficit will determine the rate of weight loss. In other words, if we eat in a larger deficit, our rate of weight loss will be faster, and if we eat in a more conservative deficit, our rate of weight loss will be slower. Now that we understand the general concept of energy balance, let's shift away from nutrition for now and towards the role of resistance training. Essentially, resistance training is the stimulus for muscle growth, which is the ultimate goal we are after. Without training, there is no stress imposed on the muscles and no stimulus for the body to adapt to. So regardless of our energy balance and our nutritional protocols, we need to provide an effective training stimulus for muscle growth to occur. How do we provide the most hypertrophic stimulus? Well, that is something we are constantly trying to improve. For this video, we're not gonna go into detail about how to provide the best training stimulus. For now, we just need to understand that resistance training is the stimulus for muscle growth. So assuming that we are presenting an effective hypertrophy stimulus through a solid resistance training program, how does our energy balance affect hypertrophy outcomes? It is often assumed that muscle growth can only occur in a surplus and cannot be achieved in a calorie deficit. However, evidence suggests this is not necessarily the case. Trainees can achieve a body recomposition effect, meaning muscle growth can occur in a calorie deficit. This is because energy balance is not the only factor influencing hypertrophy adaptations. I like to think of this concept on a spectrum. On one side of the spectrum, we have a higher likelihood or rate of muscle growth, and on the other side, we have a lower likelihood or rate of muscle growth. While a calorie surplus will certainly increase the likelihood or rate of muscle growth, many other factors influence this too. If a trainee has a good training program, a high protein intake, they have low training experience and higher relative body fat, then these factors will also increase their chances of muscle growth. On the other hand, an energy deficit will definitely decrease the likelihood of muscle growth, but other factors will also influence this too. In opposition, a poor training program, consuming a low protein intake, having high training experience and a very low body fat level, will all further decrease the likelihood or rate of muscle growth. So basically, trainees can still gain muscle in a calorie deficit, but a surplus will probably maximize the rate of growth. Now that we've covered the influence of training and energy balance on hypertrophy outcomes, the question still remains, how should we adjust our training program based on what energy balance we are in? Well, we don't necessarily need to change our training at all. This is because like we have established, training is the stimulus for muscle growth. So whether we are in a surplus, deficit, or at maintenance, we are still trying to maximize the hypertrophic stimulus. 
This will result in a faster rate of muscle growth in a surplus and a higher likelihood of muscle growth or muscle retention while we're in a deficit. So either way, we still want to present the most effective stimulus possible to ensure we are maximizing muscular adaptations. However, there are some factors we may potentially consider manipulating based on our current state of energy balance. For the most part, these variables probably don't really need to be adjusted when we are in a relatively lean and healthy body fat range. So between around 10 to 20% body fat for males and around 18 to 28% for females, training will probably look pretty similar whether we are in a surplus, deficit, or at maintenance. However, when we start going outside of these relatively healthy ranges, that's when some training variables may require adjustments. So if we are dieting down below these healthy body fat ranges, or we are massing above these ranges, then training may look slightly different. There are two primary variables that may require manipulation for these specific cases. Let's now cover what they are and how they can be adjusted. The first is exercise selection. Exercise selection may be adjusted depending on our state of energy balance and current body fat level. There are a few potential reasons that trainees may preference certain exercises over others in specific scenarios. Firstly, lifting performance will likely change depending on whether we are in a surplus versus a deficit. For most exercises, we will probably be slightly stronger in a surplus and with a higher body fat level compared with when we are in a deficit at a lower body fat. This is probably due to a number of different factors including changes in glycogen stores, changes in mood and energy levels, changes in levers, distribution of body fat, and potentially gains or losses in muscle mass. Particular lifts are more susceptible to changes in performance from changes in body weight. Generally, performance of compound pressing and squatting variations take the biggest hit during a deficit. On the other hand, body weight movements generally improve during a deficit as body weight decreases. Trainees may therefore want to preference certain movements over others during different energy balance states, simply for the sake of psychological motivation. It can be demotivating to see performance decreases even though it is not necessarily directly indicative of muscle loss. Therefore, trainees may preference bodyweight lifts like pull-ups, push-ups, and dips during a deficit, and preference exercises like back squats and bench presses during a surplus. This will increase the likelihood of performance gains during each phase respectively. The other reason exercise selection may be adjusted is due to joint tolerance. As we increase or decrease body weight, our levers and biomechanics of each lift changes slightly. This means each exercise becomes slightly different for us at different body weights and body compositions. So certain lifts may feel more or less irritable when we are in different states of energy balance and at different body weights. So trainees may want to select exercises that suit their body best at different times. For example, a trainee may switch from back squats in a surplus to a leg press in a deficit because the knees may feel slightly more irritable due to changes in biomechanics at a lighter body weight. And the second factor that may be manipulated depending on our state of energy balance and current body fat levels is volume. Volume refers to the total number of sets performed per muscle group per week, and as we know, has a significant influence on muscle growth. However, our volume tolerance may differ depending on our body fat level and nutritional state. Our overall systemic capacity may be inhibited during certain times. This will probably only occur if we were to get down to really lean body fat levels or if our calorie deficit is very aggressive. Or in opposition, it may also be inhibited if our body fat increases too much as our overall cardiorespiratory fitness and our work capacity may not function as well. In such cases, if a trainee feels like they don't have the mental capacity or physical energy to continue training with high volumes during a calorie deficit, then volume may be reduced. However, we should understand that this will probably limit the hypertrophic stimulus and therefore reduce our likelihood of muscle growth or muscle retention. Ideally, we would try to maintain the same level of training volume during a calorie deficit, and reductions in volume should only really be a last resort if they can't maintain the same level of volume. This may be required if the trainee is dieting down to a very lean level, if their deficit is very aggressive, or if they mass to a fairly high body fat level. So to finish this video, let's summarize what we have discussed. First, we need to understand that training is the stimulus for muscle growth, while nutrition supports muscular adaptations. Muscle growth can in fact occur during a deficit, 
but a surplus is probably required to maximize muscle growth. Therefore, the goal of resistance training is the same regardless of our energy balance, and that is to promote hypertrophy adaptations. So for the most part, training doesn't really need to look any different whether we are in a surplus or deficit, assuming this is conducted in a relatively lean but healthy body fat range. However, training may be modified in certain scenarios, especially when we go above or below these general healthy body fat ranges. Trainees may want to change some exercises in their program to accommodate performance changes and joint tolerance. Furthermore, volume may be slightly lower in a deficit compared with a surplus if the individual finds that they aren't tolerating high volumes very well. Ultimately, it comes down to how the trainee feels during different states of energy balance and how they are responding to their training protocol. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.